Hello, it is Friday, and welcome back to the Rethink the Rink livecast. This is the unique collaboration between the hockey team Pittsburgh Penguins, going very strong in the playoffs right now, the Carnegie Mellon University, and Covestro. Today we are streaming live from the Covestro Bright Space at the Energy Innovation Center in Pittsburgh, the room that you can see behind me. This is where the grand finale of the fourth ice hockey makeathon just ended minutes ago. This year, the students focused on player helmets. And if you watch the last game with the Pens against the Islanders, you'll see how easily four helmets came off the players within seconds. So there's definitely room for improvement. We've been covering this event daily, talking with former professional hockey player, equipment manufacturer, expert coach, and students during the week. If you missed any of these broadcasts, just go to YouTube, type in hashtag RethinkTheRink, and you'll find all these recordings. Today, we'll discuss the results of this year's Makeathon, and for that, I'm honored to welcome Sandra Vincent Wolf and Diana Haidar, both from Carnegie Mellon College of Engineering, on location at the Energy Innovation Center, and of course, Bob Walker, the organizer of Makeathons from Covestro from the very beginning. And let's see if we are able to get them on screen. And here we have them. Good to see you guys. Hi, Nico. Hi, Nico. Alive and well from a very, very intensive five days of makeathons. Right. Absolutely. So before we jump into a conversation about what happened behind me in this very, very exciting events, let's get some fresh color commentary from one of the students, Luca Gerlati, a freshman. <laughs> I think it's a great honor to be part of something this big because the potential benefit from the Safer Helmets can save dozens and dozens of people. All the groups are doing very innovative new designs for the helmets. I've seen improvements from lowering the guard on the chin to allow for more coverage to protect the chin. I've seen a lot of electronics, different systems to monitor the players and their health. A few teams even redesigned the entire shell of the helmet to allow for more comfort and more safety for the players when they do get hits. We have guys from ECE making circuits. We have mech -E making new components, new materials for the helmets. We have Matt Sai, we have physicists, we have everything on here. It's so much fun, it's awesome. So that was some great color commentary from Luca. Very, very exciting. Um, so, Sandra and Diana, before you reveal the winners, let's talk a little bit about this year's Makeathon and, and how it was run under these very, very special circumstances. Who wants to go first, Diana or Sandra? Sure. I'd love to talk about the student side of things. So, as many of you know, Rethink the Rink is a very special event because it's a true collaboration between partners that have different specialties. We have Carnegie Mellon University, Covestro, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. And it takes all three of these partners working together um, to solve the challenging problem of ice hockey safety. And so every day of the week, our students have sessions where the professionals come and coach them. And all those partners come together for the day and they give feedback on the students' designs, um, early, developed, and becoming finalized. And so usually the coaches walk in and it's almost a show and tell. It's very easy to communicate. Um, there's no barriers. But this year there were a few extra steps we had to do. We had to rally everyone together. We set up online media broadcasting stations for each group so they could individually still have the same level of connectivity with our partners. Yeah, so it really worked center. well, Nico, in spite of the challenges. You know, while we were able to have the students work together in our um, large maker space in the ANSYS Hall in their teams, you know, separated out uh, on their tables and whatnot, and a few of us were able to participate in person, we had the Pens um, professionals from Bauer Hockey as well as Cavestro join us virtually. And so fortunately, our students are used to virtual uh, engagement and we've got all the technology we need there at CMU and in our new um, construction spaces to engage with our external partners and have them really be a part of it. So daily when we were meeting with the coaches, the students were able to join online and meet with the materials engineers from Cavestro, with the Penns hockey players and with Bauer and get feedback in real time each day on their progress. 
And and you know, Sandra, if there's one place where the students probably have an inclination to watch virtual collaboration, that must be the Carnegie Mellon, because I read the history side of Carnegie Mellon, and it says that video conferences was invented at Carnegie Mellon sometimes in the 60s. <laughs> yes. So you guys go so much back. You also invented, by the way, Wi-Fi. So, I mean, yes. I'm always flabbergasted <laughs> about the, the, the historical relevance of Carnegie and technology. So if there's one place where, you know, this is supposed to work, it's, it's definitely definitely your place. Um, right. Uh, uh, we do uh, have the very first wirelessly connected campus. Yeah, that's, I think that's pretty impressive, you know, considering the pandemic times and now it suddenly becomes, you know, highly, highly relevant. So I, I know, Bob, you have been also, you know, part of this from the very beginning. So let's talk a little bit also about highlights. You know, if you look back from the week, what were some of the things where you said, say, wow? I mean, because, of course, I mean, you could say uh, you're wowed every day. But what would be something that I did, did kind of wow you as highlights during during this week? Maybe, Bob, you want to when you want to start with that? Yeah, I can do that, Nico. Um, you know, I, I, I think um, I'm always blown away by the, the commitment and the passion of the of the students at Carnegie Mellon. And, uh, you know, this this year is no different. Um, and, you know, the first three makeathons, the students who participated gave up their spring break to be part of this week long um, uh, uh, collaboration. And this year, although there was no spring break at Carnegie Mellon, um, they they stayed on one week after the spring term was over um, and gave up a, a, an additional week of their time to, to be a participant. So that in and of itself is, is, a, is, is really unique. And I, I applaud the students for doing that. And, uh, uh, you know, we have most of the time we have more students who volunteer than we have space for. So it, it really shows the character of, of these kids that, uh, um, you know, that are on campus and, and part of the, the CMU program. So is, is that, I mean, how unusual it is for, I mean, are your students so dedicated, you know, the, we don't have any free time, we just want to work and we want to work on these projects. <laughs> I, mean, I, I hope also your students also want to have free time at some point. It comes now. <laughs> now that they've done their final pitch, now that they put in all that effort, now they get to have their summer break. Diana and, and Sandra, from, from your, I mean, you are veterans of, of student education. Um, and, and you do, of course, do other other collaboration projects, uh, but probably not so many around ice hockey. So, so what what were some of the highlights from your perspective? What you have been following throughout the week? Sure. So one of the things that makes uh, CMU students special is that they work hard and they play hard simultaneously. So the night before their presentations, all the students stayed up late, finishing their prototypes and practicing their pitches. And they had on the current ice hockey playoffs games on the TV in the background. So you hear great cheering and then all of a sudden a shuffling of going back to work. And I think that dedication really shines through in a full week long event. For me, I think the highlight oh, was today just watching them come together to, you know, as teams really supporting each other during their presentations. And then I have to share, uh, you know, just a personal uh, story, personal anecdote. This is what makes this program really special to me is to have students after the program, while we're cleaning up and getting ready to go, come up to me and thank us for making this possible, for letting us know that this has been a fantastically unique opportunity for them to come together with students of different disciplines and different departments to tackle a real problem and have a real impact on ice hockey. This was an especially important year for so many of them because they have been educated basically virtually for the last year. And a few of the students told me this was the only in-person thing they have been able to do, the only experience they've been able to share at this level with other students all year, and it meant the world to them. Wow, that's that's strong words, Sandra. So now you've made it very, very, I mean, we just saw the students. I mean, I mean that photo is just, you know, literally a couple of minutes away. So. Um, can you share us a little bit about what the jury decided uh, among all the different projects we've been we've been seeing? Sure. So we had uh, multiple categories, and uh, first, second, third, and fourth place. They all have names as well. Um, so the the runner-up participation was the purple team. 
And then the next level, best prototype. The before green team. Be, 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 before you go there, just let me show the wonderful ah, students you are talking about. <laughs> so here we have the wonderful purple team. Yes. Yes, that's them. All four. Uh, we have Josiah, and um, we have over. The, we are actually heard already um, from one of those students on the left, Luca. So we have a whole a whole crew of students, and they um, got fourth place participation. Uh, they did have a very interesting design, and we appreciated seeing it. Uh, they had a few things going on with accelerometers and an ice hockey helmet, combining those two together. Cool. The next team up for best prototype was Green Team. There Here they are. Go. And so um, we actually heard from Hamza there on the left uh, yesterday in an yeah. interview with Nico. Uh, he went live to talk about how much he was enjoying this event. And uh, they did have a very interesting <clears throat> prototype, which had uh, <clears throat> some extra components on the helmet uh, to, to help the facial features not get impacted as hard uh, during ice hockey play. Cool. Red team was next. So this group was considered the most innovative team. Uh, they had interesting ideas with regards, especially um, thinking a little bit more about how the, the helmet fits and how it can stay on. Because if you don't have a helmet, it certainly isn't doing much for you in safety. And? And then next is the gold team. They uh, won the highest score. They're number one, even though um, everyone is a winner. And so they did get the, the uh, best overall award. And so really a big applause to that team uh, for bringing it together and, and, being, uh, and being our best overall group of the week. You, you got to share. I mean, uh, there's one guy I saw in that picture, Ian Suzuki, who was a part of the first ice hockey makeathon, the second ice hockey makeathon. The third. And the third and the fourth. <laughs> He's four for four, Nico. No one has beat him <laughs> in, in uh, no, consecutive years. So that's, that's, uh, that, that's, that's just, you know, I, I can remember Ian uh, sharing his story from his childhood. He was playing uh, field hockey and uh, definitely close to his heart. But Bob, maybe you can also pitch in here because some of these students have actually come to work for Covestro. Yeah, that's true, Nico. And a, a couple of thoughts. Um, you know, back uh, after make it, the first Makeathon in 2018, we we knew we had some really good ideas uh, that uh, were dedicated towards the dasher board system, um, the exterior perimeter of the of the rink. And to take those ideas further, we actually hired uh, two of the Makeathon students to work as interns over the summer in our labs to try to to refine. Uh, there's I, their ideas, and they actually uh, worked with uh, a, um, a world-renowned board manufacturer to uh, to hone in those ideas and develop a prototype, which now is actually approaching commercialization. So uh, it, it's a really good success story, uh, and and you know that kind of leads into the the you know now that Makeathon Four is over, it doesn't end here. Um, there have been, there were great ideas coming out of each of the teams. I had the opportunity to, to listen into the jury deliberations and, and I can tell you, they, they were close. Um, so now the fun starts. We, the Pens, the Covestro and Bauer will take those ideas, those nuggets, um, and, uh, and determine which ones are, uh, you know, worthy of, of moving forward and we'll, we'll take those to Bauer. Um, who uh, is a, a very uh, interested and, and willing partner to uh, do a little bit more development, to, uh, developing more prototypes. And, you know, for them, it's, it's, it's about possibly uh, coming up with a commercial product as well. So it doesn't stop here and, and uh, uh, you know, there's more good things to come. Which is, I think, you know, great news for, for, the, for the entire program and, of course, um, maybe that's also leeway. You know, all the students at Carnegie looking at, at the fourth Makeathon. Uh, of course, the question is, what's next? What's coming after Makeathon number four? Yeah, and you, I, if you're if you're talking about you know 
does this does this tradition carry on? Um, you know, I, I think all of our partners, the Pens, CMU, and and uh, Covestro, all believe, um, you know, in this process, or we wouldn't have, uh, you know, seen four makeathons, you know, in front of us. So uh, we all believe that the, the, you know, there's commitment here. You know, the the over, the ultimate goal is to to uh, find solutions that will make the, the sport of hockey safer. And, you know, if looking ahead to next year, uh, will there be a make a thon five in 2022? I have to believe there will be. Uh, I think we're all, all the partners are committed. And what I'm really looking forward to is uh, to be able to do it, uh, not virtually, but in person and uh, without masks and get back to you know that real real true form of collaboration and uh, you know all in the spirit of innovation thanks bob we have already have a, a question from from bill but before we go to the question from bill thank you bill for putting the question i want to ask the faculty sandra and diana what about makeathon five <laughs> bring it on <laughs> <laughs> we're ready <laughs> yeah the word gets out. The students have such a fantastic time sharing the stories about the Makeathon with their friends and their family and with other students. And um, it's it's a real great way to get the word out and talk about how exciting this is and what a unique opportunity this is for them to come together to tackle a problem like this in a special program. What do you say? What do you say, Diana? Will you will you do another Makeathon? <laughs> I would absolutely uh, bring uh, bring another makeathon for our CMU students. They love it every year, and I'm sure they'll keep on loving it every year. Cool. That's that's so great to hear from somebody who loves hockey as as a Finnish hockey player uh, from the bottom of my heart. Let's go. Let's go to the questions. Uh, we have Bill asking a question. Um, where is the Bauer manufacturing done? I would uh, put it over to Bob because you have been with Bauer uh, a lot. Do you have a yeah they're there we we work with their uh, r&d center which is actually located in in uh, montreal in canada um they have uh manufacturing locations all over the world but it all starts with that r&d center where the the development is uh uh you know progresses and uh, the prototypes are are finished and then it goes into production so uh the main focus for us is is the montreal r&d center and uh, looking looking at the 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 quality of the R and D work at Bauer, I mean, all, what you also uh, what um, Dan Bourgeois shared earlier. So feel free to take a look at our Tuesday uh, live cast where the VP for Product Innovation, Dan Bourgeois, told about um, uh, hockey in equipment innovation, uh, and looking also the facilities at uh, Cranberry from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Of course, it's top notch. Um, I, I think that combined with the facilities, um, the, the the manufacturing, which is then based out of these ideas, as, as you said, Bob, is probably around, around the world. Also in Finland, we get products. Where are they actually coming from? We have to ask Bauer that. <laughs> exactly. uh, I see we have no more further questions at this point. So I really, really want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for you know making yourselves available also after this very, very busy week and very, very exciting Friday to talk with our online audience about the outcomes of the Ice Hockey Makeathon. I hope you stay safe and healthy and play a lot of <laughs> ice hockey. Hi. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Nico. Thanks, Thanks Diana. Nico. Thanks, Sandra. Go See pens. you all soon. Go Pens. Go Pens. <laughs> Thank you very much for our audience for joining this final live webcast, live cast from Pittsburgh. Um, thank you for joining. And you can always take a look uh, at these former uh, live casts at YouTube at the hashtag RethinkTheRink. And with that, thank you for joining. Good luck for the pens at the playoffs. Very, very exciting times for the pens. And please keep your helmets on. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.